I'm reading this book called The Next Five Steps. Part of it is like a personality, you know, individual personality audit. <laughs> no, we know that there must be. That was not mentioned. <laughs> back everyone we're on the mobile home park exchange podcast i'm your host frank rizzo joining me is my partner eric Busito. um we are here today and we've got a very very important topic to cover today as we endeavor to keep bringing you information for your mobile home park investments or for those of you who are looking to get into the mobile home park space um, where you know the mobile home park exchange podcast should be your number one resource for that information and we're going to t talk about uh, a topic that I think um, I mean it's important for every investor uh, it's it's things that they should look at while they're evaluating their mobile home park investment you know what are some things that they should look at and to do a deep dive in to ensure that they're making the right choice, right? Because the last thing somebody wants to do in any investment, whether it's mobile home parks or you know commercial real estate, is you know they, they're going to invest this capital. They want to make sure they're they're in um, that they've checked out what what they should check out. So and and um, every individual is different, right? Um, so. But, you but may, real estate's the same. Well, not always, Frank. Everybody's looking at how to value this differently, right? If you're managing this from a distance, right, um, things may be more important to you than someone who's managing this locally, right? Um, there, there's just so many factors that go involved in it, right? Like the number one you know, thing that I always ask is, you know, what are the utilities, right? Are we dealing with septic tanks and uh, well water, or are we dealing with, you know, city water, city sewer? Huge difference, right? Um, but but I think I, you can make the case on either one of those, right? Um, because we've had both of them. Uh, we've had city but, water, city sewer. It's great because it's less responsibility, but. You know, after you have a well and a septic, and you've run that system, you you can you can get a comfortability factor. So when we first bought our first property that had well and septic, we did not know much about it. And yes, you know you can get comfortable, right? Um, but when you go to sell your property, that you're not always going to find a buyer that's comfortable, right? Correct. So so you know this is a factor but that I think is super important. It, it's it is super important, and 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 but that becomes a. Uh, a factor of price, you know, sometimes the well and septics, you know, you're going to, there's going to be a slightly less value in that, right? So, 100%. so, you know, you're going to, you're going to see a difference of where maybe that property would trade at because you have a well and septic system that you have to maintain. Um, what do you think is some other, like, what are some other uh, things people should be looking at? before um, they evaluate uh, or while they're evaluating. So, you know, what what market are you in, right? Are you in a uh, market inside of a city, outside of a city? Is the, um, you know, regulations uh, of the area uh, more stringent inside of a city than outside of the city? Uh, when I say city, I mean like city limits, right? We, we, we typically buy in properties um, that are, you know, small cities or you know, if you fall out outside those cities, you, you fall into the county. I think uh, you have to you have to really look at what's what's going on in that area to figure out what the value is there. I, I think that's a huge point, Eric. I think what, what you just what you just alluded to. Um, most people, when they buy a, a a mobile home park, right? Typically, you're not buying it in the city or your or, or the county that you live in, right? right. Because you're, you're, you know, each, you know, this is a constrained marketplace, right? There's not a multitude of mobile home parks everywhere. And a lot of times you're going to, you know, you're going to be operating this or owning this from a distance. Um, and that's where you have to know the numbers inside the numbers, right? You, you, you have to have a, an understanding of that market in particular uh, in terms of what the rents might be 
right? Whether it's a two bedroom, three bedroom, four bedroom, uh, what the lot rents in that area might be, right? Because, you know, those markets could be, um, you know, they could be completely different and you can't, there's not just a standard number that works straight across the board. What do you think, Frank, is uh, is the, the, the biggest factor that you like to look at? I, I'm a big believer in knowing where that market is, right? So you gotta, you gotta have a better understanding of the city and the county, what those economic drivers may be, right? Um, is it, you know, are you looking at a community that's, um, you know, I, I, where you're looking at a catalyst, right? You know, new factory coming into town, or you're looking at something that's a little bit more stable. Um, that's that's important. And, and I think um, knowing how much money you have to put into a property Huge. is is going to dictate, um, you know, what the cost of that property should be, right? Um, if if you need to spend uh, tons of money to put into that property, I mean, obviously the value is going to be a lot less, right? Well, that's that's a great point, right? Because even if you have, um, if you look at a property that has infill, right, vacant lots, so you know the property might, when people are looking at are a per lot cost, right? right? So I'm, I'm looking at a community that has eighty lots and thirty of them are vacant to get that a home on site Correct. right forget about the cost of the home but the cost of moving in setting up right skirting connecting the plumbing connecting to electric right there's an act real cost in there right and if part of your plan is you know I, I want to fill up the physical occupancy of that community well you have to factor that cost in to whatever criteria you might be looking at, right, for your end game. Like you wanna make sure that your money has a certain rate of return or your investment has a certain rate of return. So you could do this again, ideally, right? Um, and the way that you do that is that you, you you might have to, part of that plan might be to fill up those vacant lots um, and you have to really d dig deep into what is it going to cost um, to get those lots filled, oh, you know, get them online, open and active, so you can even bring a home. And and you mentioned this, Franklin. Super important. Um, you know, the the size of a community and the amount of lots on a community um, will will typically, and regardless of what market you're in, if you if you're buying a property with, you know, uh, the potential to put a hundred lots there, um, is going to be you know considerably different than you know a property that. You know, you could only put maybe 50 or 60 lots in, right? Um, you know, the a, a park above 100 lots trades at a higher per lot price, right? Um, um, and then, you know, that's definitely a factor. And you got to realize a lot of these properties, when you buy them, um, you know, the, the amount of lots that are there and are able to be put there, um, you know, it, it could be two different things. Right, um, and some cities are a lot easier to deal with than other cities. Um, but but you know, knowing what you could put there and what the cost is per lot is, is super important. You know, and when you look at um, you know some of the other things that we look at um, prior to uh, buying a park is you know kind of do a deep dive on their expenses. And and I find that a lot of times when you um, you, you know I always find the two ways. And, and, and it's funny because you never find, or at least I have, we haven't looked at a community where you say, okay, those, that expense line is absolutely perfect and I wouldn't change anything. It's usually, there's too little expenses and people are just not doing anything, right? right. Or there's too much expenses and you have to figure out what you could cut off, right? Out of there. So you really have to take a, a, a deep dive in those, those expense lines that people are reporting to see exactly um, what's going on behind the surface, right? So, you know, and we've we've certain, like we we had that you know community which were all park owned homes that we that we had that we had picked up in Peachtree. You know, the expenses there. I mean, the income was fantastic, right? And we thought that the rents were, you know, you know, owner had owned it for you know a long time. It was an estate. Nothing had changed, right? They had never moved the needle, but their expenses were completely out of whack. They just hired too many people. Um, and partly because he just, 
that's just the way they operated the park. They had some people that were there and, and you have to figure out where can I um, maintain standards, maintain, maintain that community um, and still give it the service it needs, but where, you know, where can we become more efficient? Um, if that's possible, right? Where can we become more efficient? And then on a lot of the times, I mean, if, if you're buying a park from a, um, you know, somebody who, who built the park or a family member who built the park, look, there's, um, you know, when it comes to expenses, um, you don't always see the expenses on paper, right? You gotta kind of figure that out yourself, you know, um, whose cousin might be loaning the lawn for free lot rent. I mean, you gotta really figure out what it's gonna cost you to run one of these properties That's a great point. on your own. That's a great point. Uh, you cannot um, go off what they're providing you, right? Um, so, so you know, figure out what it's gonna cost you to run that property, right? Are you going to, uh, are you going to be the one that's going to uh, provide um, uh, maintenance and groundskeeping for everyone's lot? Are the tenants going to do it for themselves? Uh, who's going to pay for you know, pumping a septic tank. Is the park gonna pay for it? Is the is the um, homeowner gonna pay for it? Um, all of these factors are gonna determine what you should be willing to pay for that property. Yeah. And, and, and I think it goes back to, um, even before you begin, um, having a business plan for yourself and having a criteria for yourself before you even present that offer. Right. Um, you know, in and you know everybody's cri This is where people's criteria may be different, right? You know, what your cost of capital is, or what your expected return. I mean, everybody says they want the greatest return possible, right? If I put up hundred dollars, I want to make two hundred dollars. But you have to, you know, you have to recognize the greater the risk, the greater the reward, right? And then it's what you're comfortable with. If I put out a thousand dollars today, am I comfortable getting back? $80 next year, knowing that my thousand dollars is still on the property. Some people that's great. Some people want to get, you know, a hundred dollars. Some people want to get $150, right? You have to know what your criteria or your target is. And then as you're evaluating those numbers and as you're evaluating that community, then you can make offers based off of that. What is the plan? How much is it going to cost? I and, mean, that's, and, that's how you're going to figure out what your property is worth paying for. And then what is going on in the market, the larger market as a whole? Like you're, you're, the community is part, right? That park is part of a, a city and a county. What is going on in the, in the, in the community at the, the county as a whole that is, that is going to be a driver, right? Or is going to allow you to, to execute your plan, right? So if your plan is to, you know, guide rents up to market, you know, do you have demand? Right? Is there is there is there an influx of inventory in the area? Um, is there a shortage of inventory in the area? I mean, that's those are key factors, um, especially if you're going to bring in new homes. Right? Not every home, not every community might be a new home market. Right? You know, you you might you know if you're bringing in brand new, if you have vacant lots and you want to bring in new homes to that market for, you know. Hundred thousand dollar sale price, right? Because you want to have a, a tenant owned community and homes, and you could buy a, a home without a community for ninety to one hundred thousand dollars in that market. You know that that might be a challenge. Your community better have some really good amenities that's going to drive people to that, right? So definitely, that's definitely going to be a challenge, right? That's definitely going to be a challenge. So you have to know the numbers behind the numbers, right? And you have to understand how your vision for that community is going to fit into the to the city as a whole that you're that you're investing in and that's you know one of the added things that you have to look at when you're looking at a mobile home park investment you know we we look to bring that information to you we want you know if you need more information you can click on the link below we want to get your questions you know being part of the mobile home park exchange the idea is to exchange information between different community owners, from people looking to buy community, to people looking to get into the space, to some people who have been here longer. So the Mobile Home Park Exchange is your place for up-to-date mobile home park information. So I wanna thank you again for joining me today, Eric. Um, and we, we appreciate you being part of this uh, podcast. Again, click the link and you can check us out at the Mobile Home Park Exchange. Yeah.